first uh, brew method, we're gonna talk about the French press. This is probably the most common manual brew method I know. But tell me about the French press. Why do we wanna use it? How do we go about brewing with yeah. it? Yeah, um, it's a very easy kind of um, low interaction brewing method. Pretty much all you do is grind some coffee, toss some hot water on top of it, let it sit for a few minutes, and then press it and pour it out and drink it, and you're good to go. Sounds and it easy makes enough. a really tasty cup that's very smooth, kind of has a heavy, um, heavy body to it. Okay, cool. So um, for our recipe, we're gonna be using 55 grams of coffee, ground to a, a fairly coarse grind. So remember the importance of the scale, don't forget it. I know it's like 50 bucks on Amazon, 40 bucks for this Hario, I think. Um, absolutely worth every penny. And we're using this Baratza Encore grinder. No, we're not getting paid to do that. That's just what we like. Uh, and we're using grind setting of 23 for those of you guys using the Baratza. Now, uh, every grinder is gonna be slightly calibrated a little bit differently, but we like that as a benchmark. So you're looking for about a 23 on the Encore grinder. All right, so that 55 grams took about, what, 20 seconds on Probably the grinder? 30 seconds. Yeah. So if it's super early in the morning, you got young kids, uh, you may want to keep this in the garage if you think it's going to wake up the babies. I used to, Indeed. true story, when my kids were really little. So um, anyway, carry on. Yeah. So I'm always a fan of preheating your brewer. Um, what that means is just getting a little bit of your hot water in there, getting it just kind of all around the edges and fully heated. <clears throat> just so that we're not adding hot water to a cold brewer, which is gonna lower the temperature pretty quickly. And then I like to keep that same water and preheat my cup a little bit. Um, Sounds good. All right, so I have got my French press on the scale. I'm gonna zero it out. And like I said, you pretty much just toss some coffee in there and add some hot water on top. So when I do that, I make sure that I'm starting a timer. So this little sc scale we're using is a, a pretty fantastic one. It has a timer built in. Um, you could always pull out your phone or a little stopwatch or something. If you have one stuck to your lapel with a little silver chain, that's even cooler. It means you're way cooler than we are. Um, home, when I'm at home, I usually just use my iPhone. These temperature stable kettles, also you can push a button that will also have a count up timer. Nice little nifty trick. Now, as far as adding the water, I pretty much add almost all the water. I'm gonna put in about 600 grams of the water, and I'm gonna let that brew for about a minute. After that minute, I'm gonna give it a little stir with just a knife or a, or a chopstick or a bamboo no, uh, paddle. Why do we wait a minute? Why not just top it all the way off and call it a day? So, uh, what I'm, by waiting a little bit, uh, we're letting the coffee bloom. Okay. Um, so it's it's going to release some CO2, it's going to kind of expand, um, and then when we add more coffee and when we stir it down, it kind of settles it. Now does all coffee release that CO2? It does when it's fresh. Okay. Yeah. So we didn't talk about the importance of fresh coffee. Do make sure that you're using fresh coffee. We're assuming you're going to your favorite local roaster, getting a bag of coffee that's roasted within a couple days, maybe a week max, um, and hopping onto that. So. So and after that minute, I give it a quick stir, and then I use some of my brewing water to rinse off my knife, just so that it's not getting all dirty. And then for a French press, my total amount of water is 825 grams. Okay. Um, now, French press is a little bit more forgiving as far as weighing your water goes. You can kind of just fill to about an inch below the pouring spout and that'll get you pretty close to our goal. Uh, one of the nice things about the French press is because it is so forgiving, you can get by with a little bit of variance. As we get into some other brew methods, there's gonna be a lot more precision that's, that's required. Um, but in general, that'll do the trick, right? Just about. Now I noticed you haven't put the top on. What's going on with that? Yeah, I haven't yet, but um, at this point, after, once, after all the water has been added in, I'm just gonna gently rest it on top. So how much time are we waiting? Our timer says two and a half minutes. Can yeah, we we're plunge gonna let now? It brew. Uh, we what could. if I have to run to work and I need to get this thing in my you know, travel mug? If you're absolutely desperate, you could. It's just gonna be a little weak. Okay. Um, I like to brew for about four minutes and then plunge. Now, why does that extraction time matter? Why does that time, you know, what's important about that? It's, uh, so we're using a really coarse grind for the coffee, so it takes a little bit longer um, for the water to extract that coarse grind. If we were using a finer grind setting, it would go much quicker. Okay, so if I was in a hurry, could I go for like an espresso style grind and just do a one minute brew? 
You could, but you would clog your filter and probably ruin your French press, um, so not necessarily recommended. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, but it would uh, achieve the goal of giving you a faster brew time. Great. With a lot of trade-off. <laughs> All right, so we've reached just about four minutes on the timer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and with a gentle hand, press down on the plunger. Now, sometimes it happens where you go in on the plunger and it, it tends to catch. What do you do with that? Do you just muscle it through and try to, you know? I would say give it just kind of a gentle little wiggle and it'll kind of release some pressure maybe that's built up and it should press cleanly for you. All right, now, so as soon as I've pressed this down, I wanna pour it off. Um, because there's still coffee in there and it's gonna continue brewing if I just leave this in here. So I'm gonna immediately pour a nice, tasty looking cup. Our cup is done. This is gonna be really tasty and smooth, kind of have a nice, heavy, full body to it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a pretty loose filtration system. Um, so it kind of gives it a little bit of creaminess. There might be a tiny bit of like sandy siltiness on the bottom of the cup. Okay. Don't one, drink that. Yeah, one, one tip I have that I, if I'm brewing a French press at home, is I'll take like a paper filter and add it a, in addition to the metal filter just to make it cleaner so there's no silt. Um, optional step if you really want to He likes optional out. steps. Yeah. Now he's, he's brilliant at them though, so I tend to go for more efficiency, which is really impatient. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a sip. Do it. And it's flipping hot. But Which really is good. why I didn't take a sip yet. Yeah. I'm gonna wait. So don't do what I just did because you'll burn your tongue. <laughs> but it is tasty. Ta-da.